You ready? Here we go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another awesome streaming week coming up here on DSP Gaming. Eight straight days again, another extended week of content, and this week is going to be very special, including multiple horror-themed playthroughs that are coming out here, which I cannot wait for. But today's show should be a good return one. I've got my day off to talk about, on which a few interesting things happened. Uh, we got a lot of gaming news that's been happening in the last few days. That I'd like to touch upon as well to get us kind of caught up for the season. So it's going to be a more fun, informative, laid back show. I hope that you're down for that on today's episode of the Level One Podcast. Get ready for some meaningful content. Because the king is back. The king of the live stream. Alrighty, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the show. It's the Level 1 Podcast for the 3rd of October, 2024, a lovely Thursday. And as I stated, the first of eight straight streaming days for me. As you know, my schedule has been all over the place recently um, for various different reasons. A lot of it has to do with my wife's work schedule. Some of it has to do with releases. So here's the deal with this coming week, just to hit you with this up front so people know what's going on. Um, I was faced with a choice, okay? And the choice was thus. I could either take off this coming Tuesday, October 8th, or I could take off Friday, October 11th. If you're not aware, both of those days are bad days for me to take off. You might say, well, why? Well, on October 8th, it's the release of Silent Hill 2 Remake by Bloober Team, which everyone is hyper excited for right now. We're actually going to be talking a little bit about it because the early review or earliest review of it has come out. Um, and people are pretty excited for that. Okay. Like me too. Like this is definitely the season for this. And because of that, you know, it's just really exciting to get a brand new horror game during October, especially one of this stature. So I know tons of people are so excited to see me play this game on release day. But now let's talk about the other option to have a day off Friday, October 11th. You know, the release day of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero and Metaphor. <laughs> and it's like, well, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Um, you know, what's the better option here? And thinking it through and everything. Um, I came to the determination that I think that I should have the eight-day streaming week and be here for the release of Silent Hill 2. That would even give me several days to play Silent Hill 2 before, you know, the hype dies down a little bit. Because as you know, the release day and then a couple of days after, usually everyone's pumped for these games. And then after that, it ain't so special anymore because you've played it like three, four days in a row, right? So, after thinking about it, I was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to do the uh, eight-day streaming week. And that way, I'll have that Friday off. And I'll have to come back that Saturday pretty strong with what might be a double release day. Not sure. Okay, we'll have to see. So... FYI, what can you expect this week? Well, let's talk about that quickly and just get it out of the way, right? Today is the premiere of Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. I'm very excited for this game because Dead Rising is a game that I've now played three times. Uh, when I played it last time, the first remaster that they had many years ago, people loved it. They actually liked the fact that I played through it not once but twice, got better at it in my second run because that's the whole idea is the first run, you're very low level, you don't know what you're doing. The second run... You know better where things are. You're leveled up more because you're kind of doing the New Game Plus deal. You could save all the survivors, etc. Now, this version apparently has quality of life updates as well as visual updates. Um, we'll obviously see how it goes and go from there. Um, so let's see how it, how it rolls today. I'm actually going to play it on both streams simply because it's that time of year. It's time for horror. It's time for zombies. It's time for this kind of fun. And it makes sense for me to play a lot of this game you know, right out of the get the gates, okay? So there you go. Um, excellent. Now, tomorrow, 
I'm going to try to finish the metaphor demo. I don't know if I'm going to because this metaphor demo is so long. I might not finish it, but I'm going to play it as the daytime stream and we're in an optional dungeon I'm going to check out first. And then after the optional dungeon, we're going to uh, continue on and try to finish it up. And if we don't finish it, we'll do one more stream to wrap it up. Tomorrow night is Friday Night Fights. It'll be the return of the Marvel vs. Capcom collection, which I haven't played now in a while, but they patched it and it works better now. Um, I need a break from Street Fighter VI, which has been frustrating me lately trying to play with Terry Bogard. So that'll be fun tomorrow night. Uh, Saturday will be more Dead Rising Remastered. And then Saturday night will be our second edition of Zombies Month, which they're calling the Toxic Rumble in WWE Champions. And in fact, uh, it'll be the big weekend event. Okay, which I'm excited for. So I hope you guys will join me for that. Um, and then Saturday or Sunday is React Day. So all day long, I'm doing my React content on my various other channels. In fact, the premiere of me reacting to my original Silent Hill 1 playthrough from 2012 will be this Sunday night over on DSP Throwback. So that's going to be exciting. And then Monday, depending on what's happened, if we need more time for Metaphor... I'll give it another stream. If not, it'll be Dead Rising uh, Deluxe Remaster balanced with something else, whether that's, you know, Marvel Collection or Street Fighter 6 or whatever. We'll figure it out. And then Tuesday, October 8th is the big day. The Silent Hill 2 remake. I'll be playing it all day long, and I'm very excited for that. After that, I still hear Wednesday, Thursday, but let's not get so far ahead of ourselves, right? Now, FYI, as I've already told you guys, um, FYI, uh, the schedule could adjust at any moment if something comes up. And what I mean by that is I'm currently working on scheduling the possibility of a couple different interviews here on the Level 1 podcast. I just don't know when yet because I, I literally just got my work schedule. All right. So now I can try to reach out to people and be like, hey, I'm available this day, this day and see what happens. Um, I already ha I have one person 100% confirmed they're going to be on. I have one person 100% confirmed they're going to be on. They just don't know when yet. And then I have two people who absolutely are going to come on, but I haven't really had a conversation with them about the appearance yet, meaning they don't even know, like, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, the time and everything. So, I have things in the works, but nothing set as of yet. I'm going to be working on this for you guys the next few days and over the weekend. I would like to at least get maybe a couple interviews over the course of October for Variety, but I don't want to, again, over-promise and under-deliver, right? That would suck. Um... <clears throat> And then lastly, um, Kino Casino, you know, we are working on some stuff for this month. It's not going to happen right away. You know, they just came back from their insanely long one month break and, uh, they're trying to play catch up and they still haven't, they've been, they did three different shows and they're still not caught up with all like the news and everything going on yet. Um, but we are, you know, in talks about doing some more stuff this month. We actually have two different ideas and uh, I'll let you know when we have more information on that. That's it, because people keep asking me, what about Kino Casino? Are you going to work with Kino Casino? Yeah, we're interested, but, you know, let's let's plan it out. Let's do it right. No clue when it's going to be. It could be this coming week. It might be after that. I don't know. Like, you know, when I know, you'll know. There's no reason to keep asking, you know, just giving you the heads up there, okay? Okay, so that's the schedule. I hope that sounds good. Eight straight days, double horror playthrough, first with Dead Rising, Deluxe Remaster, and then with Silent Hill 2. Uh, this should be a really great week, I feel. It's going to be a strong week because now we got some of the stuff that was lingering kind of wrapped up and some more interesting stuff is starting up now. So, I've got a, a few things going on right now. Uh, and uh, let's talk a little bit about that, shall we? So, yesterday was my day off. And for the first time in a long time, okay, I actually got to spend significant time with my wife doing fun things that we wanted to do rather than running around and doing errands the entire day. Now, not to say that we didn't, because let me tell you, first thing we had to do, we had a doctor's appointment. Then we had to go grocery shopping. So it's like, oh, we got to get these hours of shit out of the way. But we did. We actually got through it in a relatively fair time. And we had about, I want to say about six, seven hours out doing various fun things. And when I say fun things, I mean shopping for stuff we actually want rather than, you know, essentials we need. Um, looking at things that we're probably going to buy soon. So, for example, we went to a couple of stores and we were looking at ceiling fans. I said, man, if I get rid of this really busted, stupid ceiling light, there's a ceiling light in this office. It's terrible. 
All right, do you want to see it? You ready for this? Here's my ceiling light. I turned it on. Do you see it? No? Because it sucks. It's a terrible ceiling light. The previous owners installed the weirdest, stupidest ceiling light I've ever seen. It's so ineffective. It has three bulbs. Two of them don't even work. The wiring's, like, messed up. So it's a piece of shit. So it's been sitting there 10 years. I don't use it. It doesn't do anything. Okay? But I have wiring up there. And I'm like, man, what would be really useful would be to get a fan in here. A ceiling fan that could actually uh, circulate the air in here. And that way it wouldn't be stuffy on these days like today where I have my blinds closed. Because the sun is out. Having air circulation in here would probably cool it down better. So not only that, but we want to get another fan installed downstairs in our dining room. Uh, right now, we have no really way to circulate air in the bottom floor. We do have a big oscillating fan in the living room, but it only works for the living room. And we had, again, yet another hideously ugly ceiling light that the previous owners had installed above the dining room table area. And it broke and fell and almost smashed on the table. So now what we have is some not fully functional wiring dangling from above the table. And I'm like, so what we'll do, let's go and look and maybe find some uh, ceiling fans that we like, figure out the pricing or whatever, make sure that they're not cheaper online. Cause sometimes that happens. Like you go to the store, you see one price, but you go right online, you can find the same product for like way cheaper. So do that. And then what I'm going to do is uh, probably eventually go buy them and uh, get an electrician to come in and install them. And you might say, well, Phil, why don't you do it yourself? Cause I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'm not an electrician. I don't know how to do it properly. I don't know if I would secure it right. And the last thing I need is being on stream and all of a sudden a, helico a helicopter blade flies off my ceiling, comes down chopping up all my equipment or God forbid chopping up me or Jasper because I didn't do it right. I'd rather have a professional come and do it. And that way all the wiring and everything I'll know is working properly as well. Like I said, downstairs, the problem is the, the ceiling light that the, the previous owners had installed above the dining room table was this big heavy glass thing. And eventually what happened was it just lost its support and pulled down and yanked all the wiring. I don't even know if the wiring is damaged or not. So I need an electrician to come look at it. Um, so basically, yeah, and that's going to be coming up. I mean, that's nothing here nor there for you guys. But, man, it'll be nice to have a ceiling fan in here. Maybe I can have the electrician come on one of our day my days off and install a nice ceiling fan in here, which would be really cool. Um, ceiling fans are way different now from what I remember when I was a kid. Now they all have the... The, the LED ambient lights, and they all have like 10 different lighting settings. It's like, you know, daylight, bright light, moonlight, fucking, you know, crazy shit. Colors, too. They like do different colors and shit. So, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, and I'm, you know, I, I can't wait to get it in here because I really could use it. Right now, all I have is an oscillating fan. Again, it works okay, but having a ceiling fan is so much better. Um... So yeah, so we did that and we actually started looking at some appliances and things because as I told you guys, we've had things busted in this house for years or are on the verge of breaking and haven't been able to afford to get anything, any upgrades or whatever. But you know, I just had an amazing August thanks to the Kino Casino crossovers that I did uh, and September was pretty good. It certainly wasn't nearly as good as August, but it was an above regular a month for me, maintained some of that uh, popularity, which was great. And so because of those two good months, we got to basically think about, you know, doing some, some replacements and upgrades in the home. The two things we're looking at is our dishwasher, which has been broken, no exaggeration, for two years. So we've been, you know, hand washing dishes for two years. That's not the end of the world, but we've had a broken dishwasher there for, you know, just sitting there. And the other thing is our washer dryer are definitely showing serious signs of wear. Our washer keeps getting uneven load signals and things, which means it's basically getting to its last legs. It's been over a decade old now. so. We looked at some appliances. We took some pictures. We didn't buy anything yet, but we kind of were talking about probably the first thing we should do is the washer dryer. Like we're used to not having a dishwasher now for two years. That's so not that big of a deal. While the washer dryer is an essential thing we're using a lot. So that's probably the thing we need to upgrade first. And then once we get that, then we can look to uh, maybe look at the, the dishwasher. Yeah, we can't get a two-in-one. One sick puppy says, what about getting the two-in-one? Yeah, they sell these stacks. It's like a big tower that's both. We can't do that because in our washroom, we have cabinetry above where the washer dryer is. So there's no room for that. We'd have to, we have to get the separate ones that go down on ground level. <clears throat> no, Awakened Gamer, the broken toilet is not on the list because we have two other toilets that work. So we don't need to fix the broken toilet. It's like, 
I have many, many toilets in this house. I don't need everyone functional every time. <laughs> you see, it's not a big deal. Like the one that's broken is in the connected bathroom to the to the be master bedroom. To use the bathroom instead, now I have to walk to the hallway one door down to the other bathroom. Like it's some big deal, right? It's not. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, yeah, so good stuff working there. You know, that's some of the stuff we did while we were out. We had a really good dinner. We went to this tropical uh, food place where you can get like, like island food, seafood, Jamaican food. And I got a Jamaican jerk chicken with fried plantains. And my wife got a plantain bowl. We ended up getting this really nice uh, like jerk seasoning shrimp that they put in this amazing like butter sauce. And you get this Cuban bread you can dip in it. It was so good. And we haven't been out. We haven't been out together for a day where we did fun stuff in so long. And that's only some of the stuff we did. Like I said, we got some stuff for the house that we needed. Some things that have been worn down. Some things just we wanted for decor. Like we went and my wife built like one of those, um, like what do you call it? Not a bouquet, but you know how you get fake flowers. You could build like a centerpiece or whatever. We went to a store and she just built one from scratch. And that's so nice, right? <clears throat> so, no, seriously, Patrick... Did a super chat. He goes down from the rafters. It's the light fixture on the coffee table. Just a joke. I love the content lately. No, seriously, you're right. That's exactly what happened. So my, my wife was... Jasper, relax. He's in the window and he just jumped and kicked the whole thing. Would you relax? No, oh, you're being silly. <laughs> so my wife was cleaning this big glass lamp that's above our coffee table. And all she was doing, she had a, a paper towel cleaner and she's just wiping it. And the entire thing like coming down from the rafters, literally ripped. It said, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it almost hit the table, which would have been awful if it broke. There would have been glass everywhere, but it stopped right there. Like, oh, shit. So I jumped on the table to disassemble it because I couldn't reach. Like, it's the weirdest lamp. You have to like unscrew it from the top. But how do you get to the top unless you have a ladder? I don't have a ladder. I have a step stool that wasn't tall enough. So here I am laying on my back on the dining room table, reaching around the lamp holding it with one hand while I try to unscrew these big bolts from the top with my other. It was just a, a nightmare. Stupid, stupid nonsense. Like, we never would have bought a lamp like that. It's just a big, ugly monstrosity. Dangerous thing. And the day I moved in, I was like, I bet this is going to fall someday. I just guarantee it. And it took a decade, but it fell. I, I knew it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so thank you, Patrick. Let's do some shout-outs. Patrick with that first Super Chat, which is a four ninety nine Super Chat this morning. Thank you for that, Patrick. That's our first contribution of the day. Oh, I put it as tip instead of super chat. Darn. Let me fix that. And uh, we have a couple, I think we have a couple small tips here, but I'm curious if they're, you know, real tips or troll tips. When you get small tips of like a buck, you're always wondering, gee, is this some, you know, is this legit or is this some jerk? Uh, what the, uh, what did I do? There. Okay. <laughs> Screw up the whole leaderboard, of course. Okay, so this should be this. There we go. And so, I should bring this up. We did hit the funding goal, the King's Coffers goal, back on Tuesday night. So today, technically, if this, if we hit the goal today for the Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster Premiere Plus podcast stream, we will actually restart the King's Streak again. And here's the thing. I feel like the King's Streak is something that will start and stop. It's not going to be something that's going to go continuous for a long time, unless there's a reason. Like, if I do a big collab, right, with someone else, if there's a hype interview, if, you know, we do something with Kino Casino again, and it's really exciting, stuff like that, you'll get people hyped to come by the streams, and then we're going to probably get more support again. But I think it's going to be something that starts and stops every once in a while, which is fine. But what I wanted to let you guys know is we can do milestone rewards. So, for example, if the King Street hits, like, 25, we can do a special event. Maybe when it hits 25 is when we do an episode of Feasting with the King or something like that. You know, a specialty thing that normally I wouldn't be doing on stream, but we can say, hey, every milestone we do it, right? I'd be okay with that. <clears throat> and that would give people maybe more incentive to keep the streak going. If you like that show, then, hey, let's keep the King streak alive. And every 25 times we hit it, which would be like every two weeks, maybe we could do an episode of Feasting with the King. I'm okay with that. Like every two weeks is, is fair. You know what I mean? Instead of, you know, doing it way too often or not often, I think every two weeks is a good time frame for that. All right. So, if you like the stream today, I hope that you will support it in some way. Oh, wow, we have almost 400 viewers for me just 
shooting the shit. Thank you for that. We have 45 likes. Let's get that to 100 likes. We got over 350 viewers. Let's get it to 100 likes. Please click the like button. Let's get the engagement going on the stream today. And uh, let's get some support. We got the first super chat coming in from Patrick. Let's take a look at a couple of these tips here. <clears throat> so, troll. Let's see here. I got a dollar tip. Someone says, next year, a new Double dra Dragon game will release. This is the perfect time to interview and squash the beef with Mitch Dyer. You could even play co-op with him. Also, for October, did you consider interviewing Rob Gavigan? Or even have Blabs on to talk about Harry Potter and the controversy surrounding the reboot show? Let's think about this. Number one, Mitch Dyer. How many of you know who Mitch Dyer is? Do any of you even know? Because you probably don't. That's a name that I haven't mentioned in about 10 years. I'm serious. <laughs> okay. So if you don't know, about a decade ago, maybe more than a decade ago at this point, because it probably was, it was at, at the time when I was still very popular on YouTube. There was this freelance writer <clears throat> by the name of Mitch Dyer. All right. And he basically would write one-off reviews for various different websites. By the way, shout out to Pot Busta, who became a member this morning. Thank you for the support, Pot Busta. Enjoy. Um, so, the reason that I ever talked about Mitch Dyer is because he did a review of a game called Double Dragon Neon. So, if you want to know exactly how old this reference is, go look up when that game was released. Um, let's find out. September 11th, 2012. So this is a 12-year-old reference this person is making with their dollar tip, okay? So when the game released, <clears throat> Mitch Dyer reviewed it, and it was basically the worst review I'd ever read in my life. It was as if someone stumbled into, like, a, a, a restaurant, not even knowing where they were going, eat the food, which they know they don't like that style of food, and then just said the restaurant sucks. Because that's exactly what he did with this game. He starts playing the game, and he reviews it. Oh, it's it plays too old school. The whole idea of Double Dragon Neon was that it was a throwback retro game to revive old school beat-em-ups. Like, that's the point of the game. Here's a new Double Dragon in the vein of the old one. The guy, like, completely pans the game in his review. <clears throat> and every criticism is that he doesn't like old school Double Dragon. Then why the fuck did you play a modern game that's meant to reboot old school Double Dragon? Right? Like, you're an idiot. Like, I don't like shooters, but I played Call of Duty. I gave it a 1 out of 10. Because you're a moron. Right? So anyway, I, I criticized him heavily for this insanely bad review. And basically back then, I had clout on the internet, right? And so people went and basically harassed the guy. That wasn't my intention, but that's what happened back then, is if I said and did something like that, people would go harass the people involved. So they harassed Mitch Dyer, and then he came at me, and we went back and forth for a while, and he kept trying to like defend his position. He never accurately did. Like, his best defense was, well, reviews are just opinions. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But the point is, the opinion is supposed to be something with, like, facts in it. So that people know what the game is. Instead, you bitched about it being too old school the entire review. And it's a worthless fucking piece that you wrote. But anyway, this guy, apparently over the years, he went on to become, like, a full-time employee of IGN. And then I guess now he's in the game development and he writes stories for games and shit. So... Why in the holy heck would I be talking about or trying to talk to Mitch Dyer in 2024, 12 years after the fact that I had any involvement with this man? <clears throat> Why would I try to interview Blabs from the Side Scroller show? What, what involvement do I have with a political right-wing tryhard trying really hard to copy everybody else political show? I don't. I don't like, like, what are you talking about? Like, I appreciate the dollar tip, but the suggestions are kind of silly. Like, no, I'm not going to go out of my way to find the most ridiculous reaching interviews to do on the show. I want to do things that'll be more interesting than that. And I, just to let you know, so with the interviews I'm trying to line up, I have two interviews that are completely outside of the normal realm of what I would ever do. And I think they would be really good interviews. And I got one person who's actually really interested, but I have to hash out exactly how it's going to work and how you know stuff like that um and then of course you know about the other interviews i'm trying to work on that eventually i want to get wings of redemption and or boogie on here which would be great to get them but you know wrangling them it's like trying to hold a, a, a fucking eel 
that she just pulled out of the ocean. It's like, hey, it's like zipping all around. Like, and you can't even talk to the eel because it won't, it won't talk back to you. <laughs> but I'm working on it, all right? Okay, thanks for the first tip of the day. Um, Let's see here. I received a $2.25 tip from Mr. Puffy Nipples. You know they make a washer and dryer combo. We literally just talked about that. <laughs> that they make units that are completely together. I can't do that because I don't have the space. I can't stack them in, in my laundry room because there's cabinetry on the wall. Check. But thank you for the two twenty five tip. This is up to eight bucks and climbing. Thank you, thank you. All right, hold on. Wow, a bunch of tips just popped in, but again, they might be some troll here. I don't know. Oh, just listen to this. Here, this is very funny. I guess we can address this really quickly, okay? Hey, DSP. Someone took me a buck to say this. Cog is in Raw Phil's chat right now. He claims he offered to come on level one and agreed to be civil, but you refused to address it. Will you let him on level one, or is it a no-go? All right, you ready for this? I don't know what's going on with this guy. I guess because I gave him a tiny bit of attention, he's like now become like obsessed with me. So yesterday was my day off. Okay, I did no work whatsoever. Yesterday was my day to literally relax with my wife and have fun and do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, this guy apparently was talking about me all day. He was commenting on my videos and stuff. I, I don't I don't pay attention. I'm all I I'm a, I'm a busy guy. Like my life doesn't revolve uh, revolve around the guy who is like some fucking nobody on the internet who thinks that like I need to drop everything. I don't even. He said he offered to come on the level one podcast and he agreed to be some. What are you talking about? Number one, how do you offer to be on a show? That's not how it works. What happens is someone asks you to be on a show, and then you either accept or decline. You don't offer to be on the show. There's no, there's no open offers of guestitude on my show. Like, what does that even mean? It, it's bizarre. Again, the guy's so full of himself in his head that he thinks he's important, that he wants to be on my show. So he, oh, I made the offer. What, first of all, where? I didn't get an email. <clears throat> I didn't get a DM anywhere. Did you leave a comment on my video? I don't read all the comments. They auto-publish. So I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay? I don't. What's funny is someone had showed me a comment of his accusing me, saying that I deleted his previous comment. I didn't delete any comments. Why would I? Why do I care? If there's a comment on my video, maybe that's content for me later to address, right? Like, why would I be deleting this guy's comments? I tell you what happened is with YouTube system, it's kind of weird. This happened to me with the June the King documentary. So I had left a comment on the video before it had published saying, hey, everyone, enjoy the documentary and I'll be reacting to it, right? The comment disappeared. And people accused June the King of deleting my comment, to which he responded, no, I never deleted it. What happens is YouTube auto flags comments. If too many people respond and people start responding like uncivilly, like, like you know, bad words and shit like that, YouTube will just flag the whole comment. And then basically the channel owner has to go review it in their, like, held comments and approve comments for it to show back up. I don't know. Like, I didn't even look or anything. So I don't even know what he's talking about. I didn't delete any comments. I mean, literally, Pog is the last thing on my mind at any given moment. Like, for example, if my ass itches, that's more important than Cog, right? Like, if across the street someone coughs and I happen to hear it, that's more interesting to me than Cog. So, like, if there's absolutely nothing going on, and, like, I have no topics to talk about, maybe I'll spend a few minutes on COG, like we did, you know, earlier in the week. But this is not, it's just like LTG, right? Like, LTG unblocked me on Twitter and sent me a threatening message, and then everyone's like, well, aren't you going to address it? I was like, no. I address LTG when I'm bored. When I literally have a show with no topics, that's when I address LTG because there's nothing else to do. I don't waste my time just going on about LTG. Like, he's, he's a waste of everyone's time. Everyone knows this. Right? So eventually I got around to responding. By the way, LTG has responded again. I don't care. Like, I didn't even fucking say anything about it because it's just not worth the time. It's just so stupid. So basically what's happened with this COG guy, he's so hungry for attention and he can only get attention talking about me, as I already said two days ago in the, in this, the segment about him. The only way he has any relevance is if he's talking about me because then my detractors will pay attention to him. But outside of that, nobody cares about this guy. So... He's been like, you know what he's like? He's kind of like an obsessed girl who like, she doesn't get the picture. Like, 
she always kind of she's hanging around. She's always talking about you or whatever, right? It's like a song. I was in so we my wife and I was in a store yesterday and there was a song playing. You know, they have the ambient noise. And the song is a woman singing about how all she wants to do is be part of your life and all she wants to do is to become your wife and all she wants to do is be your friend for life. And I'm thinking, all should happen is the guy should be like, no, stop obsessing about me. This is really unhealthy. Like we're not going out and you're freaking me out right now with the shit you're saying, right? So kind of like, that's like cop. Like I mentioned him for a second and now he's like a clingy girl who won't leave you alone. She keeps like texting, blowing up your fucking DMs and your texts and shit. And fucking won't just stop stalking you. And you kind of told her a bunch of times, like, listen, maybe we be friends or something, but this is never going to happen. This is really bizarre behavior. And then she just continues the behavior, right? So what it's starting to feel like. Or like, you know a kid, or like a little kid who keeps grabbing your, your leg, like you're wearing jeans, so he grabs the bottom of your pants. He's like, hey, 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 come on. Hey, 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 hey. So, I mean, that's, that's the equivalent of cock, okay? So... I have nothing to say about the guy. I didn't read any of his comments yet. I have no idea what he's even talking about. You don't offer to come on the podcast and be civil. If I ever want you on the show, I'll reach out to you and make you the offer to be a guest on my show. That's how it works. So, Ariba Dirty cocksucker. Maybe I'll get back to you at some point, but for now, I'm done talking about you. Stop wasting my time. Okay. I received a dollar tip. From Creamy Pig's Fart Hole. Great. Well, thank you for the dollar tip. That's disgusting. <clears throat> Let's continue. <laughs> I received a $10 tip. Thank you so much. To Frawny, who says, Let's get some tips. Thank you for a $10 tip. Finally, one that I can play in animation. Right? Finally, we got Frank and Phil to start off the day right. Thank you so much to Fawny for that. I think it's just up to 20 bucks in tips and climbing here on the show. Or 20 bucks in contributions in climbing, excuse me. Not tips, 20 bucks in contributions in climbing. <laughs> and... I received another do $1.25 tip from Mr. Puppy Nibbles who says the washer and dryer combo is one machine not stackable. It actually is a washer and dryer in one machine. Oh, you're talking about one machine that does both? Oh, you, I don't want that. No, do you know how bad that would be? That would wear out so fast that the same machine does both? Nah, I want separate units, you know. We looked at a few different ones. There's a lot of interesting brands out there. The ones that we have that are over a decade old are LG, but there's like Samsung. Obviously, there's like the tried and true companies that have been doing it for a long time, like Whirlpool and GE. And every one is a little different, has some fancy feature. Like we saw one that's uh it's a dryer that but it also steams. So for example, let's say you dried your clothes but you didn't hang it right away, but now your clothes are all freaking wrinkly. You could toss a load of clothes in there and it'll steam them and now they look nice. They're not all wrinkled. And I was thinking, oh, that could be useful for us. Maybe something like that. So we're looking at different things. You know, thank you for this for the clarification and the and the tip there. Um also I received a five dollar super chat from Alex from Phoenix. Who says, have people started panic buying toilet paper in your city because of Longshoreman Strike? Uh, no. And luckily for us, we have a ton of it because we had recently gone to uh, Costco a few weeks ago. Last, last time we were out, which was like three weeks to a month ago. I can't remember. But we had already bought it and we actually didn't need it. So we kind of like stocked up on it. So we've got, we've got toilet paper for like two months. We're good. I'm not too worried about that. <clears throat> um, so anyway. Uh, so there you go. That's what's going on right now. Now, now what were we going to do? We were going to get the topics. Oh, yeah. We actually have some interesting gaming topics to talk about today, my friends. Um, okay, let's do it. Let's get to gaming topics today. Okay, so gaming topic number one. <clears throat> and this is one that I'm very excited about. I'm happy to hear this news. Uh, if I can find where to click. Where is it? Here we go. Gaming topic number one is that I'm, I, I, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. <laughs> Gaming topic number one. Silent Hill 2 received its first review yesterday. I don't know if, of as of today, if there's more reviews out for it. But this is the Silent Hill 2 reboot review from Famitsu. Okay. The game is 16 to 18 hours to clear. 
Beautiful visuals and a great atmosphere and considered an overall great remake getting really good scores from Famitsu, which is usually pretty picky about what they give good scores. Um, now, what I'm curious about, What I'm curious about is, oh, look, denied. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, Dark Side Phil, Silent Hill 2. So I've played the game twice. What I wanted to do was look at my original playthrough. All right. This is it. HD remake playthrough. Yep. So Hello, my, everyone. My original run of Silent Hill 2 was 56 parts. Okay. And back then... My parts were roughly, as you can see, 10 minutes long, right? If you do the math there, it's about 560 minutes, right? So probably my original run is about six hours long, roughly. It's a shorter game, right? It's about a shorter game. And that was my first run for the record. That wasn't like my second or third run where I was going for completionist and I was trying to get all the secrets or anything. But that was my first run, all right? Like six, six, roughly six hours probably. Um, <clears throat> So if you think about it this way, the 16 to 18 hours for a game that originally was like six to seven, dude, they added a ton of new content, whether it's new story elements and cutscenes, whether it's actually brand new gameplay areas. That's great. I'm actually really excited for this now because I thought it was going to be just like a straight up remake and it was going to be short and I'll it would be good, but it would be over way quick. Apparently not. I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that they put this extra effort into the game and added in extra content and the like, that's neat. So I'm actually even more excited for it now than I originally was knowing that they've added in new content. One thing that's not in this tweet, I, I saw another tweet from somebody else and they said, so it has all of the endings. Oops, I forgot to put my doorstop up. Here. It apparently has all of the original endings from Silent Hill 2 and they added in new endings too. Actual brand new spanking endings that you can get through different scenarios and the like. So that could be cool to have like replayability because now not only do you want to get all the original endings, but now you have to do optional criteria and things to get other endings as well. Um, that's neat. So I'm this is a good one, man. You know, this is reminding me of Resident Evil 2 Remake. If you remember, Resident Evil 2 Remake was remade from the ground up by Capcom. It's the same spirit of the original game, it's got the same, you know, kind of objectives it's in the same locations but it's completely redesigned to be a third person action game and it's so much honestly so much better like i think that resident evil excuse me yeah resident evil 2 remake is one of the best survival horror games ever made to this day i still think it's it's actually better than like the more that have come out after like seven and eight i think they're good but i think resident evil 2 remake is just like so outstanding so if this game is in that same vein where it's that good and they really put all that effort into redoing it and putting new content and great, you know, I'm, I'm pumped. I think this is going to be so good. So now I'm happy I chose to have an eight-day streaming week so that I could play this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, and get really far into it before my day off that Friday, okay? Good stuff. Okay, um, I got more shout-outs to do. And then, uh, then we'll get to the next story because I have a few stories to cover for today. So I received a, a dollar tip. Are you looking for shows to review in October? I would recommend Tim Burton's Wednesday show on Netflix. It's for adults. Also, M. Night Shyamalan's The Visit is a creepy movie. Uh, I don't have Netflix. I'm not going to get it. I appreciate the suggestion, but yeah, I'm not going to get it just for the one show. M. Night Shyamalan's The Visit. Visit. Is that the one that has Batista in it and it's about the end of the world? I saw it. I've already seen it. I never reviewed it, but I did see it. If that's that movie. Um, I thought it was okay. I wasn't in love with it. I, I hate that at the end of the movie, it didn't really fully explain anything. It's always the bummer with those kind of movies. No, that's Knock at the Cabin? Oh, okay. So what the hell is The Visit? I actually don't even know what that is then. I guess I have to look into it, The Visit. And by the way, if anyone has recommendations this month for horror movies for me to watch, please share. I want to know what good horror movies are out right now to watch. Uh, so far, I saw that movie Martyrs, and I thought it was just okay. It wasn't bad. It was it was creepy till the end, but it didn't like blow me away or anything. So if anyone knows any horror movies, let me know. Um, I received a dollar fifty tip from Beaver Bother. 
Can you tell us what LTG replied to you with on Twitter? I'm interested. I already showed it. We already did a whole segment on it. We already did a whole segment on it. I responded to it. And then he has further responded publicly to that that I don't even care. I, didn't, I haven't seen his response because I don't give a shit about the guy. He's so fucking... He's so unprofessional and not willing to work on anything that will benefit anyone that there's no point. Like I outright said... Listen, I would work with LTG, but let's find something that's mutually beneficial for both of us. Let's find out what helps him, what helps me. Let's do it. He's not willing to do that. He just wants to make excuses and say, oh, it never benefits me. Yeah, because you're a little baby. You hide and you cry and you complain instead of working with people to find something that benefits you. Like, I'm literally willing to work with the man and say, what would you like? Because he keeps saying money, but then he says, I don't need the money. So it's not money. So what is it that he wants to get out of a collab? Tell me and we'll work together to do it. I have resources. I have people I can talk to about this. We can get hype behind it. We can get people excited, not just from our own fan bases, but other fan bases too. But he doesn't listen and he just doesn't work with me. So why do I care? Why do I continue? Why would I continue to talk about the man? He's just a waste of everybody's time, right? Again, I'm willing to be professional and work with people, but people are not willing to be professional with me. You want another example of that? Review Tech USA still hasn't responded to my DM on Twitter about appearing on the show. Last week, he made a public fucking post on his Twitter timeline saying, let's do it. And then he says, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll DM him. He has not DM'd me. So he's never going to be on the show until he fucking becomes a fucking rational, mature adult with a professional attitude about working together for business purposes. Review Tech USA will never be on this podcast. There's no point until he fucking just can write me a fucking message so we can schedule it or figure it out. Okay. What a dunce. All right. <clears throat> Someone took the bucket says you will save on toilet paper if you install a bidet. Yeah, and I mean, not to say that I'm not interested in that because maybe that could be something that would be beneficial. I don't know. After COVID, I heard a lot of people got them. But isn't it true that like the ones that you install right, that are, like, the ones that you add on to an existing toilet, that they're not that good. Like, I've heard, like, they work for a bit, then they leak, and they fucking become, like, a, a chore to maintain. That's why I'm like, hey, I don't want a fucking thing leaking all over my floor, and I gotta fuck with this thing, you know. It's, it's pretty stupid. Like, maybe just buy a new toilet that has a bidet installed in it or something, right? They have, like, high-end toilets that have that shit. No, we have tons more gaming news, but I'm doing shout-outs. Someone like, is that it for the gaming news? No, we have lots of gaming news, but I'm going through my shout outs right now. <clears throat> bidets are a lifesaver. A $30 bidet isn't bad, but it pays for itself. Yeah, but you heard what I just said. Yeah, I've heard that, that a lot of them are shitty. Like you buy it, it's like 30, 40 bucks, and then it works for like a month. And the next thing you know, it's fucking squirting everywhere. And I get sealant and shit. Uh, I don't fucking want to mess with it. I don't, I don't want to overcomplicate. Like, oh, I solved an annoying problem, but now I created a more annoying problem on top of the already annoying problem, right? That's what I don't want to happen, so. <laughs> okay. Um, and I received a $1.50 tip. Why is Cog a guy with dead streams trying to A-log after getting donations and gassing up from detractors? What a mystery. Exactly. The only reason that this guy, this bum, is talking about me is because it's the only way he can get attention. He knows the only attention he will ever get is from my detractors because they literally are so dumb. Any person who talks shit about Dark Side Phil, they'll show up to their stream they'll basically fluff the person. Like, they'll literally grab the balls and shaft and work them. Like, with one hand, they'll have the balls and then the shaft and the other, and they'll just do this really elaborate motion to make this person feel like they're the most important person on the planet just because they're shit-talking Dark Side Phil. And then they'll start sending them money. And that's exactly what happened with the side-scrollers is they started receiving big money, thousands of dollars, and they're like, oh, shit, we got to have this train going, right? So that's what happens. And now this guy has gotten a taste of success, one stream, and now he thinks I have to keep, I have to keep it going because I want my balls massaged. See, the problem is he doesn't understand is that they're not massaging his balls because they like him. They're massaging his balls because they like to have negative content about me on the internet. What they don't realize is that Cog's negative content about me gets like 400 views. Nobody cares, right? This is not like moist critical giving me an awful, you know, scathing remark or review in his content saying that I'm a money grubbing beggar. That's different because Moist Critical actually is a significant person in the content creation landscape. People listen. Cog, right? Cog is like if you're walking down the street and you hear me, you're like, huh? Because uh, there was a mouse over there that farted on the sidewalk. 
and that's you know that's cog that's the impact that he has on the planet so i mean that nobody cares so but for him it's the only time anyone ever cared about his mom's farts so that's maybe why he's so you know all over me but anyway that's neither here nor there okay all right um okay moving on all right so now on to our next gaming topic for today uh this one is in regards to a game that i'm currently playing famitsu again has reviewed another game early famitsu seems to be getting all the early reviews these days yesterday they put out the review for metaphor re fantasio and basically they said the main story if you don't really veer off the path and just do the main story elements the game's about 80 hours long if you do the side content it's about 100 hours long and it's like yeah i guess that makes sense i guess um i guess that's very similar to a persona game right the persona games have been that long for a very very long time um and basically the way i see it is it's a double-edged sword in today's gaming landscape all right for those of you who are into tons of gameplay and value for your buck and for those of you who like lengthy drawn out jrpgs this is good news for the record that's me like i really like longer games that you're getting a ton of content like for example dragon quest 11 i loved it that was a game that had an entire first campaign you beat it and then there's an entire second campaign and i was like whoa that blows me away because i'm really really enjoying it right um same with persona 5 although admittedly i do feel like persona 5 maybe is a little too long all right um but as you know i'm playing the metaphor demo right now as of now i am seven and a half hours into it and we're not done yet we've just unlocked a side dungeon that's completely optional and we're exploring it and i'm grinding in it and that's going to be probably like hours of extra content and then after that we get to the end of the dlc where there's the final dungeon in the finale so the d i mean not the dlc excuse me the demo so the demo itself is going to end up having like 13 plus hours of content that's the demo right that's the length of some games but it was free demo so you can imagine how long the real game will be but herein lies the double-edged sword all right here's here's the problem for me and this is why i want to talk with you guys about it today and bring it up as a topic of discussion i'm really liking the metaphor demo i think the graphics are outstanding on pc i think the music is great i think the atmosphere the world design and the lore that of this new brand new world that they've created for this game is actually very entertaining and interesting to dive into and learn more about um the gameplay elements it's like persona with some twists and i like that it's not just persona there's some things that feel familiar and some things that feel different and that's what you want right ultimately you want <clears throat> variety you don't want a game that's exactly the same as persona and i'm really enjoying my time in it okay but quite frankly okay to be honest i don't know if this is going to work as a playthrough for me why i've played the demo for seven and a half hours and the entire time i streamed the demo i had barely 200 viewers on my stream okay and when i played it this last time it was really hard to get people to really even like contribute for the stream which is fine it wasn't a terrible stream okay but we didn't hit the goal for that stream but at the same time it wasn't like oh it was dead but the way i see it is this right i am in a tough position because i'm a content creator who does this for a living this is not my hobby right this is not all my free time or whatever this is my job this is literally how i support my family you know how i operate how i, how I pay for everything when i'm making content i have to be sure that the content i'm making is content that my audience wants as well as content that i want to make it's not just all one way or all the other you got to find that happy balance between the two because if i just played stuff i wanted to play all the time i'd go out of business and if i just played stuff that you guys wanted me to play all the time i'd be fucking miserable all right you got to find that in between spot and that's fine okay i'm not complaining in any way i think that's that's worth learning over the years which is something that i learned the hard way right <clears throat> so um in regards to metaphor this is a game that i know i would love to play this is a game that likely could be one of my favorite playthroughs in years for example i i just mentioned it dragon quest 11 was a playthrough that i balanced with all of my other playthroughs 
It didn't get a lot of attention. Quite frankly, it didn't even get a lot of support, but it was very lengthy and I ended up really enjoying the game. And I was like, man, what a special playthrough that I'll remember for a long time. And I do to this day, I remember some nights when we were chilling and enjoying the game and having a good time with it and how fun those were. Social interactions where we had discussions and stuff while I was playing this awesome JRPG, right? But <clears throat> the problem is, you know, even the demo, which you think would have hype behind it because people want to see the new game from the makers of Persona, can't barely bring in 200 viewers. And it's like, I don't know, this is tough. If I play Metaphor, Here's my feeling, all right? The people who are here are going to have a great time, okay? The people who are actually here for it, there's just not going to be that many. And basically, I have to be more careful now moving forward that the stuff that I'm doing isn't polarizing to my audience because take a look at what happened earlier this year. I was playing Baldur's Gate 3, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Dragon's Dogma 2, and it completely backfired. Everyone told me, you've lost the script here, right? Like, you're you're playing all this long, drawn-out, boring shit. We like you because of, you know, action, your responses to ch tough and challenging situations, um, you know, multiplayer fun stuff, more interactive, chill stuff. Literally, the RPGs are boring us. So I stayed away from RPGs for a really long time this year. Remember, I didn't play an RPG for a very long time, we did play Fallout 4. And that's because it was for a, a different reason. But even that, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like lengthy JRPG style games. Um, this would be the first lengthy JRPG style game that I've played in many, many months. Okay. Um, but what I'm seeing is it's just not getting any kind of real traction. If I'm committing to a hundred hour playthrough, just think of it this way. There's no way I could be playing Metaphor as day streams for most of it. Maybe every once in a while I could do a three-hour daytime stream. Most streams will be two hours on night streams. It's a 100-hour game. Now, I'll be like 10, 15 hours into it because I'm playing the demo. So let's say it's an 85-hour game, all right? Do the math. If I play Metaphor twice a week on a late stream, two hours each, that's four hours a week. That means in one month I'll play 12 hours. Yeah. No, excuse me. I'm stupid. In one month I'll play 16 hours right? If I play it twice a week. That means if you do the math, it's going to take me five months to beat Metaphor. Five months. Do you think that even out of the 200 who were there for the, the premiere this coming weekend, coming up, right? Or I, I think it's actually next week. Um, do you think they're going to be around in five months to watch the end of that playthrough? Or are they going to dip after they realize this is going to take five months, right? That's the problem. Like, if I just play the game nonstop, I'll get very low views, very low support, and I'll be shooting myself in the foot and hurting myself in my business. If I stretch it out to balance it out more so that I have other hype things going on to balance with it to make it work, that's great. But then everyone says it takes too long to beat the game because I play it that way, and now I'm not going to be watching it for five months and I quit. And, you know, so it's like, I'm damned if I do, and I'm damned if I don't, right? If I don't play this game, I feel like I'll be missing one of the best games of the year. And I'm really going to regret it because I love this style of game. But if I play the game, I feel like I'm hurting myself business-wise. So, I don't know. Right? Like, really, I really don't know what to do. Um, We got to think about this. We have about a week to figure it out, right? <clears throat> the good news is I'm going to finish the demo. I'm going to play the demo tomorrow. And then if I need one more stream, I'll do it one more time during the coming week. We're going to finish the demo. And basically, by the time I finish the demo, we have to come to the conclusion of what I'm going to do with this game. All right? I'm willing to play it, but to me, my fear is that there's just going to be too few people, not, no support, and then I'm sh every time I play it, it's like, okay, it's the dead stream. Why even have the dead stream? Why not just do things people want? Right? So, okay. So anyway, let's figure this out. Let's talk about this over the week as I play the demo. Let's try to figure it out. And go from there and hopefully we can come to some kind of a resolution uh <clears throat> by the time that the game comes out because right now i'll be honest i i really don't have any answers I, I don't know if i should be playing it or not okay um let's take a look at how we're doing on the stream today we still have two more news stories i like to cover so first off 
We have over 400 viewers. Thank you all for that. And 90 likes. Guys, let's get that to 100 likes. The engagement on YouTube is critical. It helps a ton. It sends people to the channel when they're searching for my content. Please like the stream. Let's get it to the 100 likes. <clears throat> Thanks to those who've supported the stream so far. Our top super chat is still from Patrick, the 499 super chat. Let's get someone to beat that right now. Even if it's five bucks, let's just get someone to beat that and unseat Patrick. Uh, Fawny with a $10 tip, top tipper. Let's see, get someone to, to unseat Fawny there and become the new top contributor of the stream in general. 31 bucks out of the 150. This, if we hit the goal on this stream, that means the streak resumes at two. So let's do that, right? Let's get it. Let's get some support. Thank you guys. Um, Speaking of which, I received a 499 super chat from Anthony. Cog is arguing with both of his brothers on Twitter because they're accusing him of being inappropriate with a 14 year old. <clears throat> if that's the case, right? I mean, I just got to ask this. If this is the case, why is this public? Why is there a family feud going on on Twitter about something like that? That's really bizarre to me. Like, right? Like, for example, let's say I had a family member that was in a real deviant shit, right? It's the fucking awful thing. Drugs. You know, fucking illicit sex and shit like that. You know that you just don't like the person. You tweet publicly about it. <laughs> hey, just so you guys know, my brother's a real fucking great A piece of shit because he does these horrible things. Like, huh? Like, I could definitely see, like, like the family treats him like the black sheep. Like, don't invite that guy to Christmas. You know, fuck him. But the we that's weird that people are tweeting about it. That's fucked up. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> anyway. Anthony, thank you for the $5 super chat. Well, $4.99 super chat. Sadly, it wasn't five. If it was five, you'd be the top contributor for super chats, but you tied. So Patrick remains on the leaderboard there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, cool. So on to our next story. This one blew my mind. Okay. So for those who don't know, recently, I think they're called Miraxis, the company, the company that makes um the Sims. I think they're called Miraxis. Does it say over here? No, it doesn't say. Well, I think they were called Miraxis or something like that as the dev team or the de the company. Um, for those who don't know, The Sims used to be ginormously popular. The Sims at one point was one of the driving forces of PC gaming. It was known as like one of the big PC games that sold millions and millions. Oh, it's Maxis, not Miraxis. Maxis. Thank you. I had it confused. Um, <clears throat> they were very popular. And the Sims games sold in droves. They were so popular, there were, like, crossovers with celebrities. I remember there was, like, a Katy Perry, you know, expansion to one of the Sims games many years ago and shit like that, right? Now, the thing that's, uh, that's kind of very infamous about the Sims, right, is that when a Sims game comes out, they sell you a base game. And the base game would usually have a good amount of content, but that content will get stale within a few months. Then all of a sudden, what they'll start doing is selling you expansion passes that have content in them that seem like shit that should have been in the main game anyway, like the Pets expansion or the Go On Vacation expansion or the Actually Have a Toilet in Your House expansion. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That was Cog's Life. That's the Cog's Life expansion. That's He hasn't gotten that one yet by shits and buckets. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so in the regards of, of The Sims, Everyone kind of knows it's kind of like it's a good game, but understand that if you want to get the content out of it, you're going to be buying the game and then spending more and then spending more and then spending more and then spending, spending, spending to get all the content from any iteration of The Sims. And people who've done the math, all right, have figured out that some of these games over their life cycles, because now they're on Sims 4, you spend like $1,000 or more to get all the content, but some of them have so many expansions that they, they later on sell them all in one pack for like $100. Okay. But in truth, it's its own thing. It's like its own cultural phenomenon, and there's still people who are in The Sims. The last Sims game that came out was The Sims 4. And I played it. I remember when I played it. It came out. It was a new game. It was interesting and exciting. I, I had just gotten my, my PC, and I said, let's play a PC game. And, and by the way, it ran well on my PC. It was one of the few games that did. I was able to play and capture and stream at the same time. Um... And I played through The Sims 4 for like a few weeks, like three weeks to a month. And I did one run where it was just like a character that was supposed to be like a brand new character, not me, but like a, a simmed character that I created just for that. And then I actually made a sim me and played through my whole sim life in the game too. It was pretty fun, to be honest, but definitely it ran out of its steam after like two, three weeks. I was bored of it. 
you know, you do a few sessions of it, you're, you're exploring, you're finding all the new stuff. Once you understand the formula and you kind of get into the groove of it, it's fun for a little bit and then you get bored. And there's not much else to do. And that's what I mean. Like then a couple months later, they'll hit you with the DLC you got to pay for to keep the ball rolling, right? <clears throat> so for me, I haven't touched this game, right? In so long. And then all of a sudden today, I'm, you know, I'm looking for new stories. And I find this, The Sims, their official account on Twitter, explore the beyond and reap the benefits of life well lived in The Sims 4 Life and Death Expansion Path, available October 31st. And I was like, is this one of those things, one of those legacy accounts that like reposts like classic tweets from like, de you know, a decade ago to celebrate? And I clicked on it and I started reading it. I was like, wait a minute, October 3rd, 8.06 a.m. Wait, what? This is, wait, this is current? The Sims 4 is still getting DLC? And I said, wait a minute, hold on a second. How old is The Sims 4? Maybe I'm misremembering when it came out. It came out September 2nd, 2014. Guys, it's over 10 years old, and they're still releasing paid-for DLCs for this game. That's insane. <laughs> A decade in, and they're still releasing DLCs that you have to pay for for this? That's pretty wild. And again, for me, like, I got bored so quick, I wonder... Is there a way to like buy cumulatively all of the DLCs in one pack up to now so you could have them? And so I actually looked into it and actually it was like a, a couple of weeks ago and I hadn't covered the news story, but basically Maxis or whoever the new company is that owns it now, because I don't even know, I think it's EA owns them. I don't even know, right? They had outright said, oh, our game plan is we're never releasing another new Sims game. We're just going to keep updating Sims 4 forever with DLCs as long as you guys keep buying them. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was wondering when it comes to things like Grand Theft Auto Online, which has been this ongoing online MMO style community with a whole sim community for it for 10 years or whatever, right? Um, role playing community, I guess I should call it. That would they ever restart that? Would they do GTA, GTA Online 2? to be packaged with GTA 6 that reboots the whole thing when people have 10 years of investment. With, with The Sims, that is literally what they've done. Like Sims 1, Sims 2, Sims 3, they're out for like five years and then they would just hit the reboot and they would just start over with the next one and you'd lose anything you had done in the previous ones. You had to kind of rebuy as that new content hit the latest Sims game. So that's why people always say that's kind of a predatory practice with the way that they do this stuff. So this is just weird to me that people are still playing this. I remember when The Sims 4 came out People were highly critical of it. People were like, this is the worst Sims ever. It has the least features, the least content at launch. It doesn't run well. Like, I just remember even people who were like giant fans of The Sims 4 were slamming the game, saying it wasn't very good. Um, so how on earth are they still having like an active fan base 10 years later? But, you know, they must. Because, I mean, this tweet was released 8 a.m. this morning. So this is only like four hours old. Dude, it has 10,000 likes on Twitter. 1,000 bookmarks. And then they should show in the contents, like, yeah, the graphics are way outdated. You know, they're 10 years old. At the time, the graphics looked good, but now the graphics are just fucking just like cartoony shit. You know, and it's like, like, it's a Grim is speaking English? And he's all excited. He posts up a meme or something. It's like, huh? And then other people are being critical, $40 for this, 40 bucks. And other people are like excited. Yes, yes. It's just so weird. It's like this community of people who like just still love The Sims and won't let go and are just willing. Every once in a while, every six to eight months, they're going to open up their wallets and just toss another 40, 50 bucks at this company for whatever menial content they're willing to offer. I mean, more power to them. I guess they put out a qu uh, quality product there, right? So Queen of Hearts says, the reason most people play The Sims is not to play the actual people side, but a building aspect and the expansions people buy for new furniture and building stuff. That is true. Battle Duck says, remember, they tried to reboot Sims City after Sims 4 and it completely killed Maxis. I forgot about that. It was a huge failed thing, right? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Lady Charisma says people who are role playing in GTA Online aren't playing base GTA Online. There's a, some kind of a modded client, and uh, and uh, Rockstar bought them out, and now they're using their their stuff. I didn't even know that. 
right? Jumper says, I know you don't get into mods a lot. A lot of games actually stay alive for a very long time because of the modding community. That's cool. What's up, Jade? Good morning, Jay. Good to have you. How are you doing? It's just wild. I don't know. To me, it's just kind of like, it's the same thing, right? Like, it would be one thing if this was like they're reinventing the game and completely changing it. I mean, the trailer, it's, it, dude, it's just The Sims 4 again with Halloween costumes and shit, right? So it's not like it's a significant upgrade or upheaval. It's, it's the same game 10 years later. I guess people just really like it, right? I guess that's to be respected. Um, but I just found it odd and newsworthy to talk about that because I don't think I've seen another game that in 10 years they're still selling DLCs and they're still somehow retaining relevancy within a fan base, right? Most games, even the ones that try, they fit like Destiny. Destiny claimed they had a 10-year plan. What happened? Within three years, it became a three-year plan and then they were planning to release Destiny 2 and people were like, wait a minute. You had a 10-year plan for Destiny. They completely bullshitted. Oh, we meant including Destiny 2 and everything else. No, you didn't. You blatantly said at the beginning of the life cycle of Destiny, this was a game that would have a 10-year plan and would last that long. And then you just dumped the game to make a sequel and make more money. You're so liar, right? It was fucking bullshit. This game has, like, outstanding longevity. I can't believe the longevity that this game has had. So, there you go. Okay, Blackout, nine months as a member, says it's the same with Destiny 2 and Warframe. Well, Destiny 2, sure. Since Destiny 2 released, they keep putting out content. Warframe, yeah, you're right. I remember playing Warframe as a launch title for PS4 because it's a free-to-play, right? And I remember checking out all the free-to-play games that were on my PS4 or available at launch, and that was one of them that I, I dabbled with a little. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, I received a dollar tip. Uh, as a troll. Just a dumb fucking troll. So once again, I'm just gonna ignore the troll. This guy is a real idiot. He keeps hitting me his buck, and I'm never gonna read what he says. Just a... Alright. Uh... What was... Oh. I think I have one more news... I do have one more news story. Yeah, I do. One more quick news story for today. And then we'll get to Q&A with you guys. And again, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. If you support the stream, please do. Have we hit 100 likes yet? Yes, we have. Thank you guys for the 100 likes. I really appreciate that. Um, Please, let's support the stream in other ways. Let's get a new top super chatter. We haven't had one. And let's get a new top tipper. Let's get the momentum going with the, the support goal for today and get the King Street back. Thank you. Okay, we have one more news story. Excuse me. And it actually concerns a game series that's near and dear to me. All right? Swig it in. If that's even how you pronounce it. Because here's the thing. There's a lot of games in the 1990s that no one had any idea how to pronounce their names because no one ever said them. Like, everyone played this game in the 1990s and liked it, but no one knew how the fuck you say it. Is it Suikoden? Is it Suikoden? Is it Suikoden? Suik Suikoden? Suik Suikoden? Suikoden? That, whoa. That's a little dangerous of a name. Suikoden. Um, but I don't know. How do you pronounce it? Does anyone know how to actually pronounce the name of this? Soy kin soy kinden? Nah, this can't be kin, it's KO. But anyway, like I really like these games. I've played one, two, and three. Okay? One blew me away because it had all these turn-based elements that I love from the Final Fantasy franchise, from Chrono Trigger, from other games. But it had this unique aspect that there's so many characters that you can recruit that you can have this army of 108 people. I'm not kidding. There's 108 playable characters in the game. Now, some of them are pretty insignificant. Like, you get them, they don't really do much. You could use them in combat, but they suck. But more so, they, they serve a purpose, like, in your base camp rather than wanting to take them out for combat. Others are, like, completely, utterly broken in combat. Like, not even, like, balanced. Um, <clears throat> but it's wild. It was the first game I ever remember where you could get 108 characters, okay? And to do it takes a while because some of them are very, very hard to get, like, like, there's, like, secret characters where you need to be in a certain place at a certain time, and you only have, like, one chance to recruit them, and if you miss it, that's it. You have to do another playthrough to get them. So you definitely need, like, a guide to play the game if you want to do it the right way. But particularly, the two things that stood out for me is, number one, the story was epic. It was, like, this really large-scale epic storyline that I would compare to, like, 
Lord of the Rings, but it's it's Japanese centric. You know, it's kind of more anime ish, but it definitely felt to me like that kind of an epic war is going on, kind of a deal, and people from all walks of life are joining this war and fighting on various sides and things like that. Heroes are villains, and villains are heroes, and it switches, and there's, it's really cool. The other thing that's really cool about the series are the giant battles because you will have an army on your side and you're fighting another giant army and it's strategic battles where you have different army groups attacking each other almost in like a, a rock, paper, scissors formation. You know, it'll be like the cavalry can beat the regular guys on foot, but then like the archers can beat the cavalry and then it's like rock, paper, scissors and then you can get other things too going on. And I liked that because it was so refreshing and different instead of it just being a straight up JRPG, the fact that it had other elements to it to make it unique. It really stood out in the 1990s. I remember I had, at first I had rented it from the game store, not knowing what it was. I liked it so much. It was one of the rare times when I rented a game, liked it so much that I went and ended up getting it myself and owning it and played the living hell out of it. The soundtrack, because remember it was PS1 and this is the era of now games are coming off of cartridges to CDs. Oh, the soundtrack is so good. I still remember some of the songs. Dun, 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 right? It's like, oh, and it's just like when you hear the Lord of the Rings theme. Dun, 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 And then you hear the Sweet theme, you're like, it hits you. You're like, oh, yes. It's like epic thing is happening, right? So it still stands out to me. I'm being told it's pronounced Stoicoden. 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 Is that it? Stoicoden? So it's not Sweetgoden, it's Stoicoden. Oh, okay. We code it. All right, I'm gonna remember. I gotta try to remember this. I have to say that five thousand more times so it sticks in my head. But anyway, so I played the first one. I absolutely loved the game. I actually ended up playing it multiple times because I liked it so much. So we code it, and then I played the sequel, and the sequel also is really good. Um, I recall liking the sequel pretty much as much as the first one by the time that I had beaten it, and I did recruit the all hundred eight characters in both games all right now remember i did get soy code in three <clears throat> um but i didn't like it so i in three didn't feel as much like the other games i remember it changed a few things first of all the graphics were different it wasn't soy soy code in three on ps2 and it just made like enough changes and it didn't feel to me like the first two games. It felt like they were trying to make another game in the series, but it didn't It didn't have that unique magic to it. It's really hard to explain. Plus, it's been a million years since I played it. Um, but that was the last one I played. Now, from what I'm going to understand, the series continued. They had a four and a five, and I never played those. It was the two remain in my mind as this classic, classic collection. And the good news is, they're coming out next year, right? The collection is coming uh, next year, and I'm excited for it, except once again, I'm faced with the situation. The same situation I'm faced with with the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The same situation I'm facing right now with Metaphor. I really want to play this collection, but is anyone going to watch it? Or does everyone just hate on JRPGs and claim that they're boring, and therefore I can't get an audience for it, right? It's disappointing. It's like I've told you guys. These are the kind of games I love. These are the kind of games as chill streams and interactive social events. These are the kind of games that make sense. I can share my passion and my love for the franchise with you. Plus, the first time I've played it since the 1990s, so it's going to be so amazing to hear that music again and get those combo attacks going again and just everything being so exciting. But now I don't know if I'm even going to be able to play it. I want to play it, you know, but I, I don't know how I don't know how to invigorate a modern viewing audience about classic JRPGs. I wish there was a way to do so, right? I, I just don't know. Maybe we have to think, figure something out. But... I want to play this game, and I just don't see how I'm going to be able to. And every time I've tried a JRPG recently, it fails. Including Metaphor, which I'm playing the demo of now, and I can't get more than 200 people on a stream. Right? I just... I don't know what else to say. I'd love feedback on this, because I want to play this collection. Anyway, Takahiro Sakayama says that he hopes this uh, Soikoden collection, Soikoden 1 and 2 HD remasters, will lead to a further expansion of Soikoden in the future. He directed Soikoden 5 and is in the driving force behind the revival. Well, that's cool. Uh, I never played Soikoden 5. And here you go, listen. That would be great because Soikoden 5 was a great step in the right direction after four made missteps. I'd love to see a proper 6 
that continues the series plot. Was Soy Coden 5 in line with the plot line? 1 and 2 are directly connected plot lines. 3 <clears throat> changed a lot, and that's why I think I didn't like it so much, right? Hmm. Okay, so anyway, Soy Coden 1 and 2 collection coming next year. High hopes for that collection from the people working on it because they are thinking of rebooting the franchise, but they need the support to do it. All right. All right, everyone. That's what I got for today. That was a loaded show, but we still have a few extra minutes. If anyone would like to, to chat, please tag me in the chat at they call me DSP. We'll have a little bit of conversation. And please, by all means, if you support the stream, I will give you a shout out and I would really appreciate if we can get some more support in before we start with De uh, Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, which should be fully installed and ready to go as of now. I just haven't booted it yet, but I was having it install during the podcast. So, Jade says, just up. What does that mean, Jade? How you doing? Good afternoon, Kakarot or Kakarot. <laughs> Keep practicing on so e coding until you can say it a bit more fluently. So so we coding, so we coding, yeah. It's it's gonna be hard because I always said sui instead of so e. So I have to remember it's four. It's not sui in three syllables. It's four. It's so we coding. I have to remember the four syllables. <clears throat> Did I hear about Final Fantasy Brave Xvs shutting down on October thirtieth? What are your thoughts on the game? Was that the one that I played for a while, ages and ages ago? Another one of the mobile games that I forgot about, but I actually spent time and money on it. Um, was that the one that recruited characters from, like, every single Final Fantasy game? If that's the case, I'm not surprised, because, as we all know, Final Fantasy has fallen out of prominence. Let's be honest here. The, the, the franchise is failing. Final Fantasy 16 way underperformed. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, way underperformed. And people weren't getting as hype and, and, and excited about those games as they should. Final Fantasy is not really being a, a, a game series synonymous with greatness anymore. That's sad. It always was. It was like the premier JRPG that everyone talked about at all times. And now it's just kind of like another game. And that's sad, you know? So that, that game, that mobile game, came out around the same time as, if I remember, like Final Fantasy 15, And so it had that hype behind it. But since then, in the last decade, look how the mighty have fallen. So I'm not shocked to hear that maybe the game's just not making money anymore. And therefore, that's why uh, they're going out of business and closing the game down because they're just not making any more profits, right? There you go. Makes sense, I guess. Oh, no, I'm not surprised to hear that. I would be surprised if like Final Fantasy 16 had been a smash hit, Re Rebirth had been a smash hit, and then this is failing, then then I'd be surprised, but it's not the case, right? Jade, I'm not sure what you're saying. You said you just finished eating. Um, okay, it was good to have you here. Looks of occasions, did I ever play Worms? I think I played one of the Worms games a hundred years ago. I couldn't even tell you which one. Uh, I messed with it. You know, it reminds me of Lemmings, right? Like, Lemmings is very similar, but Worms is more combat-based or whatever. Tara says, Rebirth is still many people's game of the year so far, including mine. Listen, everyone has the right to like what they like, right? And personally, maybe if I had kept playing it, maybe I would have liked it too. No, I wasn't disliking it. <clears throat> I will admit that, sadly, the game's pacing was very off early on. And then when you finally get into the meat of the game and it's actually very good, um... Then it gets run into these these open world segments that are just kind of grindy and repetitive. So maybe maybe the game would have just been better as a streamlined game. Maybe the optional side content kind of bogs the game down. You know, I don't know, but maybe I would have liked it more if I kept playing it. And more power to you if you did. And if it's your game of the year, I I mean I've already explained to you guys why it didn't work for my streams, right? <clears throat> Six seventy two says, do you do, do you prefer the OG Dead Rising or the OG Left for Dead? I always like Left 4 Dead more. I never I never played it. Well, I take that back. I did play the original Dead Rising back in the day. I bought it as a discounted game on Xbox 360 after it had already been popular. And I didn't like it. Because at that time, you know, this was before I was a YouTuber. <clears throat> before I became a YouTuber, I was a, a casual. 
Really, I was. Like, I only liked games that were easy to play or jump into or adopt or learn right away. I didn't want to spend significant time learning how to play a game or a franchise. I felt like they should all be just easy to pick up and play no matter what. And Dead Rising definitely has its own thing going when it comes to controls and elements of how to use weapons and all of that stuff. It's very unique and different from other game franchises. So, for me, I didn't like it at first. Now, when I played the remaster years and years ago, which I'm curious, when was the remaster? Here, let's find out. The remaster was in, ready? September 13th, 2016. So it was eight years ago that the PS4 remastered edition came out. And I even said in the description of the video, I've only ever played the game for an hour before. It caused me to mass rage and I fully expect the same here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay then. So the original came out in 2006. The remake came out in 2016, and now the deluxe remaster, right, is now coming out in 2024. This game is an 18-year legacy at this point, right? Holy crap. This playthrough was 38 parts, but I was doing about 20-minute videos in 2016 from what I can see. Some were longer, but some were shorter. The zombie tunnel from hell, broken BS. Oh boy, I can't wait to do it. I can't wait to do it all again. All right. So yeah, there it is. I'm looking at it right now. <clears throat> uh, so, this will be interesting. Eight years since I played the last one. It certainly doesn't feel like that, but man, it's been a while, right? So, Automata says, is Stellar Blade style over substance? Why is everyone nominating it? I, I don't know. Because to this day, I still ask, so what's so great about Stellar Blade? And no one will tell me. But yet, people are claiming that it's like one of the best games of the year. I'm like, yeah, but what was good about it? To me, I looked at it, and the combat looked very similar to Bayonetta or Devil May Cry or variations, right? With flashy graphics and, you know, a, a, a over-the-top sexualized protagonist, right? That's what the game was. So I watched people play it. I watched things of it, and I was like, it's not really that interesting to me. That's why I skipped it. I didn't really care about it. But now people, oh, it's game of the year. Okay, why? What did it do? Did it have an outstanding story? Was the combat groundbreaking and really blow you away? Never really seen something like that before. Were the graphics revolutionary? Were the, no one can answer. Like, no one ever has a legit answer to the question. They go, oh, it was really good. But, but why was it really good? Can you justify your statement of, of satisfaction? Or were you just kind of taken over by hype at the time because everyone else was kissing its butt too? You know, I just, I, I have a hard time with people telling me what's, what's so good about it, right? <clears throat> Am I open to modding PC games? You know, I've never done it before, and I don't know the ins and outs of doing it. Um, as of this point, I've had my gaming PC for two months, and there has not been a clamor whatsoever for me to play modded games, even though I have the ability to do it. I mean, I'm not sure. Like, the one I would like to play is Fallout London. I would love to play Fallout London, and we have it, and it works on the PC. I feel like we will go back to it one day when it's appropriate. But, you know, outside of that, no, not really. But I think we'll do Fallout London someday. I'm feeling that. Okay. No, I'm not playing any SpongeBob game anytime soon. Goldfish is I like the quest for NPCs. The open world can be a bit pain, but otherwise really fun. You mean Dead Rising? Yeah, because again, remember, in the first run of Dead Rising, it's impossible to do everything. Like, it's literally a trial and error game where you cannot do it all the first run, but the second run, maybe. So the second run just feels much better than your first. Lady Christmas says, the, the thing with character action games is the combat is very moldable. So simple that you can mash X but, and win, but then for those who want to learn the system, it can be fun. Like, I get that, but I don't think that that should be the case. Like, you just shouldn't be able to beat a game by mashing X, you know? Like, I still remember one of the easiest games I ever played was Kingdom Hearts 3. 
And I was so bored the entire game because literally all you had to do was mash buttons and go between three different abilities and you could just dominate the entire game. Even, even the final bosses weren't challenging. And I was like, why did they make the game like this? The other Kingdom Hearts games before this were actually very challenging. This one is just like a simpletons game. And then people told me, oh, it's because you played it wrong and you should have done this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I played it as designed. I shouldn't have to find some secret criteria to play your game differently to get the enjoyment out of it. It should be enjoyable just by playing it. It shouldn't be you have to qualify it with this specialty thing, this and this. That's bullshit. So, you know, any game that, oh, but it has potential to be good if you play it this way. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You should just be able to pick up the controller and play it and enjoy it. Now I have to have some special guide with you and criteria of how to make it a good game. That's just dumb. And if that's how Stellar Blade is, I do think that's a dumb game design, you know? But maybe it's not because I haven't played it. I'm just telling you from what I saw, it didn't really inter interest me. See, Ellipsian, we talked about this. You, you, you joined late. Ellipsian says, in regards to metaphor... You've always said that you could afford to do a slow support game as long as other stuff is doing well and balanced around it. I feel like that's how you can give Metaphor a shot. Here's the problem with that. Metaphor is 100 hours long. So if we play it only on night streams, twice a week, that's four hours a week, it would take me five months to beat it. No one's going to watch that game for five months. Everyone's going to want me to move on to other shit. It's going to be another situation where I have this game that's lingering and I really want to finish it because I invested so much time in it, but everyone's pissed because I'm not playing the other games. That's the problem I'm facing. If Metaphor was 40 hours long, I'd be like, yeah, let's play it right away. I, I don't care. But 100 hours, five months to beat it? I don't know, man. That's what, I know, that's so silly. Lady Christmas is the problem with Kingdom Hearts 3 was they considered it a kid's game, and it was made overly simple. Most fans were in their 20s. No, the earlier games were harder. Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 are way harder than 3. So why would you make a series that previously you had to be better to win so easy so now anyone could just mash buttons and beat it? Like, you're not even appealing to your core fan base. They just really missed the mark with that game. I mean, they that's like, to me, that's one of the biggest missteps and, and flops you could have done with a game franchise. It really didn't satisfy anyone. It didn't satisfy the hardcore fans who wanted good story resolutions. It didn't satisfy those looking for good gameplay. It really, you know, it just failed on all levels. Probably why we haven't had a Kingdom Hearts 4 yet, right? Why we're not really hearing much out of that camp. They probably are making it, but that's why there's not a peep. Because they <laughs> they know they want to have this one be, be good. All right, well, guys, I think it's going to be time for us to adjourn the show because I do want to start with Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. I want to remind you all the way it works is when this stream goes down... It's going to turn off and lead you over to the stream where we're going to do that. It is. I am doing separate streams for my gameplay. This stream is not where I'm going to broadcast the gameplay. I just want to make that abundantly clear so there's no misconceptions here. And oh, Where's the stream? I don't get it. So just stick around if you're here live. And when the stream goes down, a pop-up will happen. It'll say, hey, head over there. And for those of you who are watching this on demand, thank you so much for watching the show. I appreciate everyone watching. Please remember to like the video and leave comments. It always helps out a ton for the engagement on YouTube. All right? Thank you guys so much. What a great return show. I had a great chill time. And if I could find the thing to click. Here it is. Wait, that's not it. Uh, hold on. Here it is. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, thank you all for chilling with me. I hope you enjoyed the show. And no real drama today either, which was nice. Uh, tomorrow, we'll see what happens. Let's see what goes down today, and we will go from there. I thank you all very much for chilling with me on the Level 1 Podcast, and I will see you all on Friday.